Hello and welcome to another episode of the Embodied Life Coaching Podcast. I am so delighted to welcome Catherine Morrison on this week. So I met Catherine in a mastermind that we both did a couple of years ago and to be honest it's just been absolutely amazing to watch her transition to like I was aware of her before we were in the mastermind um, and it's very interesting as we do this work to create the lives that we want to have to see people kind of do it a few steps before us and so I was thinking about this earlier Catherine and it's like it's almost like you're my bigger bolder big sister like going out there like (laughs) I don't actually think that you're older than me but it's like you know it's like I'm like oh I'm slightly more willing to be slightly more visible and you're like have it I'm here (laughs) like I'm naked on Instagram what are we doing next (laughs) so I'm so excited to have you here to share a little bit more about your journey and how you got to here so welcome um yeah, let, let people know a little bit about who you are, because I haven't done that. Yeah, sure. So I think when when we first met, um, I was running a mindset coaching business, and it was very much like, your thoughts are a formula, and this is what you do. And um, since that time, I had like a major spiritual awakening and went whole, it's been like a spiritual magic carpet ride for me for the last few years. And a lot of that I mean, there's a spiritual aspect, but then I think it's just coming home to yourself, which for me was like a lot of, I was a super linear logical thinker. That's true to me, but I had suppressed all the parts of me that were like the feminine love of, of beauty and, and intuition and all of the, like the, the artist sort of, sort of archetype. Right. So I am a business coach. I help people build businesses. And at this point I would say, it's like people come to me when they want to have a business that is like equal parts strategy and intuition, structure and flow, right? Like creativity and logic. And I, I exist. I think there's some people that like they're, they're magnificent as like at all structure and strategy. And I think there's some people that are like all flow and and energy. And I'm just, when you want someone that blends those two things together. Um, I mean, I think that's probably the transformation you've seen me walk through over the last couple of years is like really coming into that. Um, and so it's what I love to help my clients do now amazing thank you um and yeah it it has really been amazing to to watch you and it's interesting because when I think about my own journey I will often say to people so people who listen to the podcast probably you know you might not so I left law following like burnout and being signed off work with stress in 2018 Mm -hmm. and I look back now and I'm like was it burnout was it the start of an awakening Mm, yeah 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 you know, you get to that point of like, I can't keep doing life like this. And like the messages are getting louder and louder and louder. So I would love to know, just as kind of like a starting question, what was it for you that made you decide, because you had your own successful career in tech, what was it for you that was like, I'm going to leave this and I'm going to start back then and I'm going to become a career coach? Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think for me, it was like, first, I love it's like, I'm very spiritual now. But when I left my, my employee job, I was an atheist, right? So I, but I was always someone that believed that there was purpose to life. And and that like, every person had a, ser- a sort of unique purpose. And I remember my first sort of inkling that I might be going into an awakening was I had a friend and he had like enough of the titles that I would listen to him. He was like a UPenn Wharton graduate, but he was like super into like studying the Kabbalah and mysticism and had like spent a lot of time in like Israel with the mystics. And he was like, so if you think that like life has a purpose and you're here for a specific reason, how do you square that with like not Mm -hmm. believing there's anything else? And I just like couldn't answer it. (laughs) But at the time it, it felt like more before it was any sort of spiritual purpose. I just knew I was out of alignment with my values. Right. And so I think it was like after I had my daughter who's nine years old now, like after I had my daughter, I just became aware of like, I wanted her to believe that like she could be anything she wanted to be in the world. And I wanted her to believe like, I don't know, so many things about like how precious she was and her unique gifts in the world. 
And then I recognized that like, I didn't believe any of those same things about myself. And that was like a really hard truth to, to come into. Right. And so I think it was sort of gradual from there, but as I started to like, I really was motherhood, I think for me, that made me wake up. Like, I don't want to, I want to break these patterns now because if I don't break these patterns now, I just pass this down to my kids. And I'm like, I mean, when I was working in tech, I would, I had never stepped foot in a therapist's office. I had no idea what coaching was. And I was like working in a job I didn't like, and then coming home and drinking. Like that was really like what my, <laughs> how, and I was like, I guess this is just what life is. And for so many people that I was surrounded with, that was what they thought life was too. Right. So I think it was really for me just starting to question that, that maybe this isn't what life is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love that. So you you changed, you transitioned, you became a coach. And I think I picked you up as you were helping people do the employee to entrepreneur transition. Yeah. Right. And I know you mentioned then about your spiritual awakening, but I would love, I mean, I don't care what anybody else wants. I would love to hear more about, right? And this is what I am going to call that transition from. I'm here, I'm going to help people transition to, here is who I am. Like you said about coming home to yourself, like yeah. here is who I am in all my glory, sometimes literally in all my glory on Instagram, right? And I'm not only this is me and who I am, but I'm also going to help other people do that same journey. Right, yeah. Right? It, in, but in a really big way. Yeah. So you want, you want the woo version? You, you in? I want the woo version. I would just go on the spiritual want, magic carpet ride. I want the honest version. I want the unwatered down. This well, is so I think it was like, there were, and there were years at, and I actually think my spiritual awakening, it really was in tandem when I started building just a mindset coaching business. But at the time I didn't know, like I was such a baby in terms of like understanding intuition understanding what my inner voice was, like understanding any of that. And so I remember there was like a period of time when I was doing the career transition and I was journaling. Um, it was like very early in the morning. I woke up early to have just some me time. I had three children. So sometimes to get me time, it means waking up early or, you know, just figuring out how to carve that out. Right. So I had woken up early and it was almost like I'd gone into a trance state because I was just free. I think I was doing the artist, Julia Cameron's The Artist Way. She talks about just like free form journaling, like for multiple pages. And I was doing that and I was writing about how I wanted to help people come into like who they were meant to be in this world. And I, I think at the time, because I was sort of in a trance state, I didn't realize what was happening, but then I, my language actually shifted to you. Like it, it was like a message was coming through and it was basically like, you haven't done this for yourself. Mm -hmm. And so like, who, who are you? Like you have, this is your work. Your work is like getting to the root of the root and the bud of the bud. And when you're able to do that, you will be able to walk other people through that. And then I remember it was like, it ended with a winky face. And then I felt energy leave my body and I was terrified because I, <laughs> I was like an atheist. Right? <laughs> so I'm just like, what just happened? And, you know, I was just like, oh, that was my subconscious or that was, and I'm like, who knows? I still to this day, right? Like I actually haven't had an experience like that since journaling. And so maybe it, like whatever. Right. But it was enough to wake me up because as I looked at those words on the page, I was like, the truth is I'm not like, I'm marketing to people to like change their career, but it's like, I am not down to the root of like my soul. And at the point I would say that like, I didn't even necessarily, I love how like people are like, oh, my job is like soul sucking. But if you actually want to talk about the soul, most people are like, well, that's weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, but what do you think it is when you talk about like your job is soul sucking, or this is like, you know, like whatever. Right. And it's like, it's so common that people can talk about it. We all recognize there's something outside of just our thoughts, right? But then it, it, when it came down to like, what is that thing? I like really just started to go on a path of like, what is that? What is that thing? And so I had worked prior to starting my business. I had worked for years in business development and sales. So I was pretty good at business already. And my, my mindset coaching business was growing like very quickly. I think we did over a million dollars in our first three years, but 
in tandem, like on sort of the nights and weekends, I was meeting with shamans and going to women's circles and sitting in plant medicine ceremonies and like really just starting to journey into like the realms of, of the soul, right? And like what sort of lives beyond the mind. And it, at the time, I didn't feel incongruent, right? To, to have sort of, it was, it felt like living a double life. But because I wasn't like, I wasn't ready to lead others on that path. I was still, I it really felt like I was still sort of like coming into my own there. Yeah. And, and then last year I had a very well-known mastermind from my um, last iteration of my business and um, we were launching and I just had resistance, right? And I was trying to use my mindset tools to be like, I just have to coach myself into like not resisting this. And it was so clear. I was like gripping and like attaching with the mind. So I wasn't letting the intuitive knowings come in. And then as soon as the launch ended, it like, it was sort of like the, the gripping of the mind dropped and it came in clear as a bell. Like, this is it. That's the last time you run this. Like you aren't meant to be doing this anymore. You're meant to be like, like actually helping people with like what their destiny is in this lifetime. Like that thing that years ago you got in your journal that you wanted to do, but you like totally weren't equipped to be yeah. the person. Like you now are that person and it's time to go. And that was very terrifying because I was at that point, we were at around like, I don't know, 600, a little over $600,000 annually. And that mastermind was about $500,000 of that revenue. Mm -hmm. And I let that go. And that was about a year ago. And it's been, it's been a journey. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. But I love that. I love that ability to get to that place of, because it's so confronting, isn't it? That thing of, oh shit, I'm, I'm, I've not done the work that I need to do to, to, to do that, the, to do this next piece. Like I'm going to have to face myself in however that looks um and I think it is so interesting and I, I want to come on to this in in a minute like because when we worked together similarly I was in the mindset world the mindset business and um and same for me for the last year I found this lovely retreat venue when I go down there when I hide for a few days and I hand my phone in and we do the medicine ceremony and we do the breath work and we do the sound healing and we do the getting in the water and being cleansed by the water and and it's amazing and it's incredible um and it was interesting I was listening to your hot girl summer podcast Catherine has a podcast we will put it in the show notes um it's very good it's one of very few I actually still listen to <laughs> but you know you said like we have this desire for these things but they don't exist but then we have to create them. Yeah. So like I had this year started to create online retreats because a lot of my people work internationally and we don't necessarily want to get on a on a flight for so long. Um, but I think that that's just so interesting of like how we get to that space. And so picking up on that thread, obviously you had the download and you you'd done the note. But then you you get to this place of like, okay, so the tools I have, I'm assuming the tools I have are not quite sufficient <laughs> for the journey that I want to go on. You know, yeah. so for me, that looked like, and actually I think you're similar. So I did a load of like trauma, nervous system, somatic stuff. Mm -hmm. I think you have done lots of other pieces. So what did that journey look like of like, okay, I have these mindset tools, but actually in order to, to really do the work on myself and with people that I want to do, something else is required. Yeah. Same I, mean, I, was, I would say I'd, I almost tr approach like my professional development with like two filters. One is like, is there a tool or skill I'm missing to help my current clients? Right. And I think for me, that was what brought me into a lot of like the somatic work, work in the nervous system, all of those things, because it was just like so clear that like, I, I work with a lot of people that I would call high performers, but I was like, oh, this is for sure a trauma response. Right. <laughs> I can't identify at all. <laughs> right. And so like, like I was like the tools of like the mindset tool they have, they're great, but they're not sufficient for the whole thing. Right. And so like that was, that really like created a lot of that work. But then there was also like, I, oh, I called it the other filter, like just following my sparkle, 
Mm-hmm. Right. And it's just sort of like what, when I track what in my, the nuances of the feelings in my body, like, when do I come alive mm-hmm. when I get exposed to something? Right. And so it's sort of like, I started doing a lot of like shamanic work. I started buying, like, I have Koshi chimes and peacock rattles and like a lot of like sort of sound type instruments. Yeah. Right. Um, I started doing like a lot of like altar work, very intuitive, right? But they, I mean, my husband jokes, he's like the frog in the boiling pot with my spirituality. <laughs> oh, I, 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 I don't you worry. We're going to ask you how you're navigating the marriage with this one. <laughs> That's coming. <laughs> you know, every couple of months, there's like a new <laughs> altar in our house somewhere, right? And so, I mean, I, and actually like just this past, past last week, I joined a program for psychic development because like, it's, it's sort of like as certain thing, I'm just starting to get clear visions mm-hmm. and like clear downloads. And honestly, it's like, it's all just stuff I remember having as a kid, just like knowings. And mm-hmm. even when I like worked as an employee, I think some of this can be explained by like, I have very high emotional intelligence, but I remember like my last job as an employee, um, I sold like multi-million dollar custom software deals. And I remember when I sat down for my por- performance review, my boss was like, how do you do it? And I was like, do what? And he was like, you always seem to know what's coming. Like you always seem to be like five steps ahead of the deal. And like, you know, when something's about to go sideways and like, I just thought I had higher emotional intelligence than the other like men on the team who were like, weren't listening and like scrolling on their phones during like a virtual meeting. Right. But I'm just like, oh, I, I've just always had this gift of sort of, I can see and feel what's coming. And it's gotten clear. Like I started getting it very clearly for myself and my business, but now I just get stuff for clients. Right. And I'm just like, but for me right now, I just don't, I'm like, I can't control it. I don't know like where it comes from, but if you go see a psychic, they just turn it on. Right. So I was like, well, it feels like if it's already coming, like that is interesting to me. I would like to do it on demand if I could. Right. <laughs> so like, yeah. I, so it's sort of like, what's practical. And like, well, I don't, no, I think that I would call the psychic develop. It's a gift I have, right? So I'm just developing my gifts. Yeah, yeah. And so if we stay with that for a minute, because again, so I'm just bringing my lived experience into this. You might be like, no, it hasn't been a problem at all. But just step into that space where you own this, right? Yeah. I have these gifts. I get these psychic downloads. I've had these big awakenings. There are pockets of society that are like, yeah, of course. But then there are pockets of society that are like, excuse me, what? Like, this is ridiculous, like it's all mad. And I think it takes an awful lot of capacity, mental capacity, like the ability to stay embodied through all of that, to be like, this is who I am and I'm going to own it. Like, and not only am I going to own it in my little pocket of the world, but I'm going to own it on on the world stage, essentially. Yeah. What's that been like for you? I think it's quite easy now, but it was not always in the beginning. Like, I I think like for me, even like to get to the point where I could even rebrand last year and come into like, I'm all in on spirituality and like the work of the soul. Um, it like, I actually remember it was in a, a breathwork experience, probably like three or four years ago. I knew I could feel like my mind was like, spiritual people are weird. They're like, so like, but I'm still the person I would go to like tarot readings. Right. So like I had judgment And I thought it was weird and that all those spiritual people were weirdos, right? But then I'm just like, there was always clear desire and interest and it felt sparkly to me. So we just had to start to track. What do I just have? Like no one taught me to have the sparkly energy towards it. It's just in me. And then if I have resistance in my mind, that's always my next work is like, what if I have to just follow the impulses of my desire and what feels sparkly, my only work with using my mindset tools is to use mindset tools to get myself on board so that that expression can come through me. And in a, in a breathwork experience, I remember I was like so resistant to like any sort of spirituality, but then there I was at like a spiritual retreat and in a breathwork, <laughs> in a, in a breathwork experience, I like, I I went in with the intention of like clearing. I I wanted to know like, what was that resistance? I did want to clear it. I I recognized I had mental resistance, but I was still there because I knew I had desire and it came up. Like it was so fascinating. Clear as a bell, which first of all, and I, I I was not told with holotropic breath work that your hands could become like lobster claws, right? Yes. Yes. (laughs) So I'm sitting there in my breath work thing and my hands are like lobster claws and I'm like, (laughs) what is happening? And then it's like a memory that I hadn't even like 
considered for like 20 years came up of there was a woman when I was little who was spiritual and she became a sort of black sheep of the neighborhood. And she, and there was genuine, I think like mental unwellness. She was abused by her partner. Like it wasn't a good thing. So it wasn't like, it wasn't actually from my adult brain. I can see it wasn't all about her spirituality, but she was a woman that when I was little, I was very attracted to her. I'm just like, I don't know what Miss Claudia is doing, but I need to go see it. Like, I just always wanted to be over near her house. I was like so attracted to her. And then I just started to see that like other people don't like her. Other people don't like, she's bad. She's not safe. Actually, that was the thing. It was like, she's not safe to be around. And in that breathwork experience, it, it, I was like, oh, this is my, this is like a core part of my resistance is I just have a, a genuine giant part of my subconscious mind believes spirituality is not safe. Right. And so I think it was like the moment I could see that and then start to like question it with my adult mind of like, was it true that she was unsafe? Was it her spirituality? Were there like other elements of like men her mental health, her family situation, like what was going on? And I was able to sort of rewrite that memory right? Like rewrite that experience for myself. Like that, honestly, like after that cleared up almost everything there was there. Were, I mean, of course there's other things like society is going to judge me and they're going to think I'm weird. But at that point I was like pretty out in the world with who I was. And so it was sort of like, I was okay to own myself, but there was such a core part of me that thought it wasn't safe to own myself. It's amazing. And, and I love that you shared that I've recognized recently. So my big thing, I mean, spirituality, any of it, visible, all of it, is I have this story from my childhood that the more successful I am, the more I harm my sisters and make my mum jealous. Mm. And so that's a huge thing for me of like, how do I step into this thing of like being more successful, being more visible, knowing rationally as an adult that well, she might be jealous, but that's who she is. But I'm not going to harm my sisters. I'm not going to yeah. physically harm them. But you're right. We often have these big blocks that hold us back until we can see them. Yeah. Um, and it's fascinating as well what you say about when we go back to the things of the childhood. So I, one of my little things on the back here is an amethyst. And I remember when we were kids our school trips were rubbish. We used to just go to the local museum over and over. You'd go to the local museum, you'd go to the local museum and you'd get a little bit of spending money. And I always wanted the little box of the like little gemstones mm -hmm. that you could get. And they would have these big amethysts. I mean, that's only a little one, but they would have these big amethysts. And I always, always wanted one. And I'd completely forgotten that until I started working with my first coach. Yeah. And then got to a point where I was like, I'm getting the arm at this. Yeah. Yeah. I, and it is so interesting. I do feel like who we were as children, it's oftentimes just these clues. Like I actually, like when I was little, I would make altars. <laughs> like nobody, nobody taught me to do that. I didn't have any training in it, but I just loved like my, I asked my mom to get me like little things of incense and I would just, and then I remembered I burned the dresser with incense and then I wasn't allowed to have it anymore. I don't know. Like maybe they should have forewarned me as like a nine-year-old to not do it. Right. But it was just like, so interesting. Cause I'm like, oh, I can see when it was fully out and expressed. And then I can see when I crushed it. And now it's just so interesting to just, I'm like, I'm just going back to like the, the me who was little and loved running through the forest and tracking animal prints and making altars. <laughs> Which is amazing, isn't it? I mean, as you can kind of see, I've sort of embraced the nature thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it, but it is, it, for me, it is that place where I become connected to myself. Mm-hmm. You know, how do we come home to ourselves? For me, it is, it is being in nature each day. So you mentioned it before, which I'm glad because I wanted to go there. Because honestly, it's been one of the biggest challenges that I've had. And I'm kind of, where am I? I'm like dipping, I'm, I'm more than one foot in, one foot out. I'm more than have dipped my toe in, but I'm probably still a little bit, I'm not fully sure where I sit in terms of all the spirituality piece. Like I have my incense, I have my sage, like I'm surrounded by all the bits. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm using all the bits and I'm doing the retreats, but there probably is still some resistance for me to be like, this is completely how I feel. You are obviously 
on a slightly different chapter of a different book. <laughs> but it's a similar book, just a different chapter. <laughs> but tell me, because I'm very interested. Yeah. About how your marriage has been impact, how you've navigated all of these changes in your marriage. You know, I don't, it's so funny. I don't think it really, yeah, it, it hasn't been a big issue in our marriage. I do think there are some things, like, I'm not sure if you know this, but I my longer term vision is I want to like run an intentional community that's like a higher consciousness sort of spiritual right. community. And I think my husband does have some reservations about that. But like in terms of me just getting into more and more spirituality, my husband was raised super evangelical Christian and like can cite Bible verses like in and out. And and also like he came, I was raised Catholic, which was like, um, have, have shame and guilt and like just listen to the man at the altar. But my husband was raised in a family where it's like, follow the teachings of Jesus. And like his mom would like do bread runs and like go to the prison and work with the women, like, like actual, like real (laughs) meaningful, like right devotion. And so I think my husband had sort of left Christianity, but I think he's very comfortable. I like his, his mom genuinely believes that like God speaks to her. And I think a lot of Christians think that's weird. Right. But he's just like, Oh, great. Like now Catherine's getting all these intuitive downloads. Like I married an atheist and, and we kind of joke, like I do sometimes wonder cause his family doesn't know yet, like the direction I've gone. And I mean, I, I don't know, like, I guess I, I would call myself just like quite spiritual, but I, I tell my husband, I'm like, do you think your parents are going to have more or less of a problem with me? Because like before I was an atheist and they were just like, we hope she finds Jesus. And now I'm a witch. So (laughs) is it worse? I'm not sure. Right. And so I think there's like things like that, but he's like totally down. Like he has come to sound healing experiences with me. He has come to like, he's really open. He's an open and curious person. He was a philosophy major in college. So even though he's like a, I mean, he's a software engineer by trade. So he's that very logical linear mind. I do think he's like, he's very open about the ways that the world might work. I think he pushes back. And I honestly kind of push back too, when any spiritual dogma goes too far and thinks they know like the very specific answer about how something works. Right. Um, But in general, I mean, like he's come with me to like couples Tantra retreats and like, (laughs) <laughs> and and like had fun with them and like enjoyed like going out and like it is kind of funny we went to a tantra retreat last year and it was before the retreat started and we had, it was in california so we flew out to california for it and we're like my husband and i are sitting on the beach and then we just see this group of men come and then they start doing like wim hof breathing yeah. and then they like started going into the ocean and doing like what looked like maybe tai chi or like some sort of movement like holding their ground and then doing movement in the ocean and i was like honey i think those are probably like the men from the retreat like i think we're probably yeah. gonna meet them later <laughs> like where, i mean it was like a very unique scene on the beach and he was just like all right i'm in right and he like and it, it was in fact this a lot of the like the men were there later that day And he had like a really enjoyable time and actually was like even asking some of the guys on the way out about like, there was a particular breath called the chi generator that like he actually like still uses and he started doing like cold plunges and showers. So I think there are certain pieces of like, it's more for him, like the breath work or cold plunging. It's more like somatic nervous system, like all of that versus just like, for me, I'm deep in like archetypal energy and like all of that. Um, so, I mean, he's not coming fully into my world, but he'll, he'll dip his toe in. He'll come for a visit. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So my, so my husband's called Nat and I would say he, he might dip a toenail in, Uh but he very much would like to, if there's like, if there isn't a scientific paper (laughs) that can like back it up, he's quite resistant, but it's interesting to notice like the changes over the years so the first time that I wanted to clear the house I didn't feel comfortable to buy sage because I was like I can't burn sage in the house he won't be okay so I ended up getting a sound bomb to clear with sound Mm -hmm. and then it's interesting now I'll just wander around the house with the sage and he's like you've had the sage again (laughs) the other day he's like I can smell incense but it is interesting that every time I go through the next well feels big iteration at the time 
it does create some like real wave and it's like okay well how are we going to navigate this next wave and it's like are we going to navigate are we going to not navigate like is this going to be the thing that breaks us oh no we're going to be okay and then we go to the next wave and to the next wave so it's very cool that your book is very cool <laughs> it's a little bit more like I'm not sure about this but he did do little things like going on like our hut they love us they do. Right. And like they love us so much and they want us to be happy. And I would imagine like they want us to be our fullest expressions. Right. And so I think like it's, it feels like to me like the worst case that like my husband thinks sometimes like I'm a little bit of a weirdo, but I always was. Even when I wasn't spiritual, I was still kind of weird. Like I was yeah. wearing hats and dancing and doing like funny things in our kitchen. And like he loved the weird part of me then. And he loves the weird part of me now, even though sometimes it makes him a little uncomfortable. Yeah, which is fine. And you're right, actually, because like Nat has Nat will come back from things and he's like, I've brought you some he, he's like, I've brought you some crystals. See, bro? And I'm like, thank you. And then I've got to show you this. So I had this whole experience on a retreat last year. People are gonna be watching this now and be like, We didn't know all of this about Louise. I <laughs> I had this I went on this retreat last year and there was some it's legal in the UK. We did do a medicine ceremony with I mean with something called Cambo. I don't know if you've heard of it. Yep. Anyway, so we get to the end of the, the retreat and we do this checkout of like, we say our name, we say like what we've got from the retreat and everyone was going to like sing or like chant back to us different things. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, my name isn't Louise. Mm. The only thing that was in my head, my name isn't Louise, my name isn't Louise. <clears throat> and I was like, I don't know what my name is, but it isn't Louise. And the woman running the retreat was like, well, just, just check in and just see. So the only name that came up was Persephone. I was like, the name that's coming up is Persephone. And I'm there not really having a clue about Greek mythology. Everybody else there is like, <laughs> So the lady winning the retreat was like, well, maybe just go away and like have a look about Persephone and just see if any of it rings true. So my birthday this year was last month. Mm. And I found an artist and bought me a card, which I've kept which is art, it's called Persephone by a lady called Rachel Greenbank, like almost a year later. And that was that real life of like, I've remembered, I've listened, and you can bring all of that shit to our marriage and it's fine. Yeah, like if that isn't your husband supporting you and your journey, I don't know what is. Yeah, that's beautiful. So lovely, so lovely. So what next for you do you think? Where is life leading you? Yeah. Where is life leading me? Well, I mean, like business, family, I guess I could just touch on all of it. I mentioned a little bit ago, I do think in the longer term, I will run some sort of like for sure retreat space. And then I would like to have it be an actual community where there are houses. Um, I love the idea of it being a conscious, like higher consciousness, spiritual community. And like, you know how there's planned communities now and the HOA gives you like, like a game room. Like I would love it to be like an HOA that gives you like a podcast studio and a creator's thing and like places for artists. Um, so I think that's probably like long-term vision, but there are certain things. And it's so interesting. The more that you talk about it, like I, I speak, I'm speaking it into the world, but as I've started speaking about it, it's just like, I've literally never known architects in my entire life. And an architect just moved in like across the street from us about nine months ago. And like, now I've like talked to him about it. He has so many ideas. He's like all in. And then my kids made another friend and he's like an interior designer and architect. Like they're very well known. <laughs> and so, it, and now actually the two architects are like fighting over who's going to get to be like the lead architect. Cause for them, it's like, they, they love, they want to create conscious spaces that like are great for people, right? They're not even in the spiritual space, but for them, it's like, sort of when I was talking about like for me before I was spiritual, I just wanted to be in alignment with my values. Right. And so for these guys, like oftentimes they're working on like airports or like large, like corporate skyscrapers. And like that stuff is like, it's good. It, it's like practical, but when they think about like, if, if they could put their architect brain on how would we design a space that's like highly conscious and designed for community. And like, I want to have there be like a Zen space where it's like the sort of mon more monastic people live Right. And then there's like a, a space in the neighborhood where there's like wild young children running around everywhere. Right. So like, I don't know the how of that at all, but it's coming. It's coming for sure. And I'm like saving up a lot of money that my business is generating from that. 
Um, and I think that was actually something like I always had that vision and it wasn't until I blew up my business last year and made this pivot to spirituality that I realized like, oh, this actually is not even that far off. Like, I bet you there's a lot of people that like are coming to buying into my program. Like right now I run an online business and I have a branding program and a messaging mastermind and then a mastermind for scaling as like people are going from six figures to a million. And like those people, I'm like, oh, they would probably want to buy a house. Right. So like, it doesn't even actually feel that far off. Right. And so it is just fascinating when we have these ideas, these dreams that are on our heart that seem so crazy. Like I had that dream of like that community when I was like just starting out in my like mindset coaching business. And I'm just like, I don't know how these things are related. And at this point I would say like, oh, I, I can see like clear dotted lines. Like we're going into Facebook ads. Now we're getting really good at like creating clients into our programs through that. And I know one, I have the skill of how to run ads to find people. And then two, I have an entire audience of people that would be interested in a community like this. So that's where I'm headed in the longer term. Right now I'm in my hot girl summer though. So that's yes, a whole you are. taking some time out. And I love, I also really love what you said there. Cause again, real big intentional shift for me this year. Like how do we get out of up here and shift yeah. to heart's desires? Where is our heart leading us? What's on our heart space? Um, and I love that. I want to go back to one thing that we talked about because I didn't, we didn't do it enough justice. Okay. Breath work. Oh, okay. So let's do it. You talked about the claws. So what? I actually have a lady that comes in and does breath in, in with, with some of my groups or like on my retreat. I'm not breath trained, but I love it. So I, I get someone to come in and do it. Yeah. And she always does it. I think it's so scary to talk to be like, you need to know about all the risks and one is tetany and all of your jokes might see stuff. And I'm like, everybody. <laughs> but just really, it's not even like a great big topic, but just how powerful is breath work? Like when you get into that space and what yeah. like the stuff that has come in for me yeah. in a breath work session has just been incredible like on the whole spectrum like past lives dying like yeah, yeah. Really bad things like the most pleasurable like experiences like just absolutely insane yeah well I mean I think it's like it's funny because I feel like it I think actually the somatic and nervous system work is sort of like just dipping your feet in and if you keep swimming you go into like the realm of spirituality but like we could even talk about like the the basic benefits of breath work that like my kids are learning the square breath in school, which I'm just like, thank God. Like the, <laughs> that's like a thing that's like being bothered to talk about is regulating yourself. And so I think like if we're just talking about like the like easy peasy beginner breath, like just are you, if you're stressed, is your breath shallow? <laughs> and if so, maybe you take a moment and take three deep breaths and then come back to wherever you are. Right. But then if you want to talk about something like holotropic breath work, or I don't know, there's like a lot of like tantric practices and like things that I've been to where it's like, you're going into deeper realms of like oxygenating the body and then triggering actually, I mean, like when you go into like deeper breath work, you're triggering the same part of your brain that gets triggered when you go into plant, like oftentimes plant medicine work. Right. So it, it's like DMT, right. So it's like, there's all of these things that start to come up that you have access to that you don't generally have access to. And so I think for a lot of people, um, I mean, I think for me before I like started working with any sort of plant medicine, one, it scared me. And then two, I was like, I don't even know where I would begin with that because it's fairly underground. <laughs> and so like breath work was like a really nice, like it's, you can just do it in the privacy of your own home. If you're in a community that like offers it, like you can find women's circles or spiritual circles where like things like that are done. Um, and then get oftentimes like an experience that can be just as potent as many sort of like plant medicine ceremonies. Yeah. Yeah. And like, so the, the Cambo thing I talked about before, isn't like a mind altering one. It basically just basically get better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but one of my clients who she'll not be named for obvious reasons, when she finished her breath, first breath work session in one of my groups, that was basically her response. She was like, "This is better than all of the drugs I've ever done." Yeah. In terms yeah. Of I <laughs> yeah, we started I I in my scaling mastermind we have like an an in person retreat and we started with like some pretty intense breath work so it was like bringing up their legacy and then going into breath work to clear timelines, right? 
And for a lot of the people that come into that work, I'm oftentimes a bridge, right? Like, so there were, I don't know, like, I think, so, I don't think any of the, my masterminders had ever done in a breath work experience like that. Right. So there's like certain things and they like came out, they were like, that was better than an orgasm. That was like more mind blowing. Like the, just the experience they had from just a single breath work session, um, in terms of like the energy they cultivated in their body, the things that came up from their subconscious, like the, the sort of energy that they sort of encoded into their nervous system from that. It's pretty potent. So that was the topics that I wanted to um, to grill you on today. And I'm so grateful that you came on. Um, is there anything of like the stuff that we've been talking about that you feel like, oh, like I've got more to add here. I've got more to add there. Like, is there anything else that you would like to say? No, I mean, I think we sort of flexed and flowed and we talked about like what was really interesting for us. I guess the only question I would have is like, based on what you know about your audience, is there anything that you think would provide additional clarity or like many, any more information on any of the topics? Because I feel like we went, I've been on a handful of podcasts. We went more spiritual than like, I think I've been on like any of the other ones. And so I do sometimes just like to think about whoever's listening, if it's, if they have enough from our conversation to like hook their mind into yeah so I think they'll be down for it and I guess I think as well it's it's, it's just showing what's possible when when you tap into certain pieces um yeah. but if we go back to where you started today yeah. to maybe like bring it all together because you started talking about how you were a very linear strategic thinker and that's still a part of you and yeah, then yeah. there's this other part as well yeah Right. Because I think it's really so I do a lot of work with internal family systems. It's like how do we embrace all the parts of ourselves, right? Yeah. yeah. And so in terms of practically, from a business perspective, I think a lot of coaches listen to my podcast. From yeah. a business perspective, how do you now infuse the two? Because you aren't sort of sitting there navel navel gazing all day like praying to the sun and then it all happens. Right? <laughs> I mean, I think it's like, if we were to talk about like, you could call it masculine and feminine energetics, yin and yang, Ida and Pingala, like no matter what, there's so many systems for thousands of years that have studied these like different types of energy, right? And I would say in the beginning, I was all structure, I was all linear, I was all logical. And there wasn't that life force energy, like there wasn't that creativity, there wasn't that intuition, there wasn't that like me getting quiet enough to be receptive to hear the next step. And so I honestly think like coming into like my soul's work, I think I have a competitive advantage, right? Like one, I mean, sh could I have built my mindset? We were on track last year to for sure do a million. Like I could have like been out of alignment and hit seven figures. And then for what? Right. So it was just like, we, we see enough people doing that, Catherine. You don't. Right. Yeah. So I was like, uh, I see where this leads. And it was so interesting because, like, for me, I had left my job that I didn't love. And for a time, I did love just the mindset stuff. But then it wasn't like it started to be incongruent because I was like selling mindset. But then I knew the truth of what was getting me results was I was listening to my intuition and moving. Right. And so I think that for me, like when people go too much into the intuitive realms and trust me, I have friends right? <laughs> like, and they can't ground anything down into the 3D. Like we need the structure. We need the strategy. We need the logic. But I just think if we're here to do big work in the world that's aligned with our soul, we have to get what the work is first. And then we use all of the strategy, the logic, the linear thinking to like actually transmit it as like a lived thing in the 3d world which is i think the thing a lot of people miss right like they're like all for like i'm going to be expressed and i'm just like well yes be expressed but we need that expression to transmit to like humans <laughs> so that your expression actually has a transmission that changes the collective in some way and so i mean i think it's just like if you go too far in like the realm of the mind and the strategy and the logic you might have like success on paper, but you'll feel empty and it will feel cold and it will just feel like you are living in a stone castle. And then I think if you go too far the other way, you're sort of just flying out and like, <laughs> like I actually have a girlfriend. She does. She's like, uh, she trains like psychedelic informed coaches. And she's like, I haven't even sat with psilocybin in over a year. Like I went in, I got like the very clear guidance on this is what you're meant to do. This is what you're supposed to do for the collective. And she's like, I don't need to go back into ceremony. I just need to use my strategic mind to get the business shit done, right? 
So I, and I think that's, that's the balance, right? When we can listen to what's the creation that's wanting to come through me and you don't even need, I think there's so many artists in the world that don't even call themselves spiritual. They're already tapping into those realms, right? They, they just don't know it. Right. But it's just sort of like any sort of artist that's pulling through new creation and not doing something derivative, right? Like not like an interior designer that's like, this purple couch looks good with this. That's more like the realm of the mind. But like anyone who's bringing any sort of creation or art in, you need to have the other side of it to actually ground it as like a change in the collective. Yeah. And you asked the question before of like, is there enough, like what's the theme? What's the thread? Is there enough here for the listeners? And so I'm going to sew it all together now because yes, there is. But just in case they haven't got it all, One of the things that I talk about the most in my work is how do we create an extraordinary life on our terms, right? How do we do life our way, not the way that we get told to do or the way that we think we should do it? And I might actually call the name of this podcast Embracing All of Who You Are. I think my takeaway for the listeners today is it's safe to embrace all of who you are and to dip your toe in, and to try new things, and be open, and be curious to what is out there, and see where life leads you, right, because Catherine has had her experience, I've had my experience, you know, also Catholic upbringing, but I'd left that behind, very, very, very head-focused legal career, um, And it's interesting, the lady that runs the retreats I go on was my first coach. And I said to her, I was like, well, I was always spiritually curious though when we started working together. And she just looked at me and she went, no, you weren't. (laughs) No, you weren't. You were one of the most shut off people I've ever met. And I'm I'm thinking, I'm thinking, well, that was was spiritually curious for me. But but what she was like, you felt the sparkle inside of you, but then there was probably all the resistance in the mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I think it's like, just track the sparkle inside of yourself. Yeah. 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 And just let yourself be whoever you are. Yeah. And then you, if you need to use mindset tools to allow that to happen, right? Like once you track the sparkle, I do think mindset is still very important. It's not like I have not thrown that out the window. I'm just like, that's just not the whole story. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So thank you so much for coming on. I have, quite frankly, the most fantastic show notes I've ever been given by your (laughs) by your ops manager, Cheyenne. I already have them and some fantastic photographs, which blew my mind because I was looking at them. I was like, I swear something is weird is going on on these pictures because it's like there's a light going around the outside. And I was like, no, there is a light going around the outside. They're like. what is happening? I was like, this woman is so magical that her photograph, like something's happening to the photograph. And I was like, oh no, I think it's that. <laughs> it's not, I don't even know what photograph you're talking about, but I do love my brand pictures. So I bet it's great. No, but your brand pictures, when you look at them, yeah. maybe they don't, maybe it was just what happened to me. When I looked at your pictures, yeah. when they came in, it was like a white light started down the bottom left and outlined the whole of the picture and then stopped. On all of them. Spiritual gifts. I have no idea what you're talking about. Maybe you are seeing my aura. I don't know what's happening. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Uh, That's what only happened when I saw your pictures. And I looked at them a few times. I was like, there's definitely a lot. So there's only one way to find out. I guess wherever you're going to post this picture, if the audience can please let her know, yeah. do you see a white ring around my photo? Because that's not like, that's I don't know what you're talking about. It's not like an intentional thing I do with my brand pictures. There might've been maybe that she sent a couple that the light was coming in in a certain way. But anyway, we'll find out. No, like, but imagine that you started off like an electrical current down the bottom and then you could watch the electrical current move around. But on more than one of the pictures... I did literally have no idea what you're talking about. So I can't wait to see if I can see it or your audience can see it. Or if this is just like, we just found out that you have like the ability to read energy or, or I have no idea what's happening. So anyway, who knows? So, um, so tell, but so it will be, so the information about this is the most bizarre. It's, it's been so much fun. The information for finding Catherine is going to be in the show notes, but Catherine tell people, where can they come and find you if they want to come and see you naked on Instagram? 
I haven't posted my naked pictures on Instagram in a little while, but you'd have to scroll back. They are there. Um, you can find me at www.katherinemorsoncoaching.com. It sounds like that's going to be in the show notes, so I'm not going to spell it out. I'm also on, on Instagram at Catherine Morrison Coaching. And since you're listening to a podcast, if you enjoy podcasts and you liked hearing from me, you can come find me on my podcast, which is called Ascension Through Entrepreneurship. So if you have your own business and that's interesting, come find me. Amazing. And that's because I've already seen the show notes. That's also in there. So go and find Catherine on her podcast. And this week, so this is going to come out next week, I think. So we're recording this on the 2nd of June. Catherine's just had a podcast out this week that basically talks through kind of like how to how to engage with her podcast, like depending on where you're at with her journey. So if you need some help with engaging with her podcast, which you need to go and do, maybe start with that episode because then you'll have it like a whole podcast guide. She's been very helpful to people. Yeah, yeah. actually this is, I'm going to do a click. I completely forgot, but I just made a resource for my audience, which is you just go to katherinemorsoncoaching.com forward slash podcast roadmap. So if you're just like, cause I have over 150 episodes and you're like, I don't know where to get started. That is like a really nice, simple guide that tells you some of the best episodes for you, depending on where you're at. Come find me. Amazing. Thank you so much. And I will see people next week. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye. Catherine.